Welcome to lesson two of the non-musician's intro to digital music composition. To start things off, we're going to cover a very important procedure you will be doing a lot, adding another synth to Reaper. If you look in the description, you will see a link to ERS drums, or ERS drums if you prefer. Open that up, and you will see a page that looks like this. Download it. I'm going to assume you know how to do that and open up the zip that you download. Again, I'm assuming you know how to do these things. And then where you're going to extract it is by default C program files VST plugins. You can actually put it in any folder you want to, um, but I'm going to assume you're putting it in this folder. Once you've done that, you can close out of all that stuff, go back to Reaper, and then you'll want to go to Options, Preferences, and way near the bottom, under Plugins, click on VST here, and set this folder by clicking Add to wherever you extracted that file to. Again, by default, C Program Files VST Plugins. That's the usual place for these things to go. Um, you can also add again to set multiple locations. That can be handy when you're dealing with big sample packs that you might have on an external hard drive or something, but for now all you need to do is have this be the same as where you extracted the drum kit VST. Then just hit rescan and apply and OK as necessary. Now when you add a new virtual instrument you will see Urs Drums as an option. So go ahead and add one of those. We won't do a lot with this in this lesson, but it's a fairly simple drum VST that's easy to tweak and is a good starting point. Two things before we move on about the Reaper interface. This push pin here, when it's pushed in and active, means that that window will stay on top. So even if I click around back here in the main Reaper interface, this window stays up. If I unpin it, then it gets moved to the back. Just something to be aware of. Secondly, if you want to reopen a track's properties and tweak the sense or apply effects, which we'll get to later in this lesson, just click this FX button here or down here. They're totally interchangeable. And that will open up the track properties and let you uh, mess with stuff again. For now, you can leave Urs Drums configured as it is by default and Go ahead and drag out a MIDI clip here. We'll just add in a very simple drum line. By default, in most drum kits, you'll find the bass drum on C, usually C2 or C1, and then the snare drum will be on D. Then you usually have toms going up. These uh, are some pretty odd sounding toms, not gonna lie. And then you have hi-hats scattered around here, and cymbals somewhere in this area. All we're going to use for this is the bass and the snare. Also worth noting about writing drums is generally they don't care about note length. Whether I drag out a note like this, or leave it as short as possible, it's still just going to play a kick drum. Let me solo the drum track here really quickly. Exactly the same, doesn't matter how long it is. Reaper has a dedicated drum display mode. If you go to View, Piano, Roll Notes, you'll only write out these individual things. Some people like it. Personally, I don't use it. But good to know that it's there. So a basic rock drum beat is bass, followed by snare, and then bass and snare, one on each beat. That's fine for now, just copy that and paste it a few more times to fill out this particular MIDI clip, and then go ahead and close that, and that's all we will do with the drums for now. Now, with this many instruments, even though it's not that many, it's still getting kind of muddy and hard to hear. 
So we are going to jump into one of the basic production techniques, which is EQing, otherwise known as equalization. And basically, EQ is cutting out or boosting certain frequencies of a given track or sound. So to start with, let's go to our melody and open up the FX here, and then add, and under the Kakos tab, which is where all the default Reaper plugins come in, you'll want re-EQ, Reaper's equalization plugin. This plugin is really cool as far as built-in EQs go. Um, if you play the track it's on, you'll get uh, a live visualization here of the volume over frequency of the sound you're hearing. And that is incredibly useful because as you can see here, most of the peaks for this instrument are here, around 1000 Hz. That's really useful to know. Because if we wanted to, say, EQ uh, our chords... Oops, as you can see I was messing with that earlier, so I'll just delete that, start fresh. Add EQ. Um, if we wanted to EQ our chords, which we can check, but their peak is much lower, so we can drop out this section without losing any of the root notes and just diminishing the overtones a bit. Quick bit about music theory, overtones are basically what makes a sound sound like it does. If you have just the note, that's just a solid tone, like a sine wave. The difference between a guitar and a saxophone and a violin is all in the overtones. So modifying overtones with EQ, as you can imagine, is huge and a substantial part of what you will be spending your time doing when you produce music. For now, we'll just cut out this part and listening to the two together, the melody comes through much more clearly than it does like this. Don't worry too much if that difference isn't obvious to you. Um, EQing and listening to... Like, you, you'll probably be able to tell that it sounds better that way, but it will take you a lot of time before you're able to hear those two things and say, oh yeah, there's room in the higher frequencies for the melody. That's why it sounds better. So, for now, just be aware, keep listening, and that'll definitely come with time. Okay, very, very common EQ technique. You will be doing this constantly. This is a high pass. You just whoop and cut off all of the low frequencies. In other words, you cut off everything below a certain frequency, leaving only the stuff above it, hence high pass. Re-EQ has a default high pass setting for the um, EQ points. That's, you know, not a whole lot different than using a low shelf, but... The fact that one is called low and one is called high can be really confusing at first, so don't worry too much about the terminology, and just remember that for non-bass instruments, you typically want to cut off the low frequencies to make room for both the bass line and the bass drum. Those are the two things that really easily get messed up. Um, just listening to our melody, there's almost no difference between the two sounds with this low frequencies cut off. And that, in this case, is good because that stuff would just get in the way and slightly muddle up the lower frequencies in the other tracks. Um, when you're dealing with fairly pure tones like this, the high passing is not as important, but expect to use this a lot as you move on to mixing more uh, complicated synthesizers and even real instruments. Okay. Next is one of the trickiest parts of production, and that's getting the bass line and the bass drum to play nice together. It's pretty good here, mainly because these are both very simple tones, but if we, uh... Also, this is... Ur's Drums is not a built-in plugin, that's why it opens in this separate window instead of being built into the window here like the Reaper plugins are. So if we add a, a Reaper EQ 
to the drums and just listen to them for a bit. You can see the bass drum is like all the way down here and the snare is so quiet you basically can't see it on there. Uh, so we can crank the gain for just a bit. Uh, that's not very useful. Alright. Well, we're not going to worry too much about the snare right now anyway. Um, in the future, you do want to pay attention to where the snare is hitting. But the bass drum, as you can see, is entirely localized in this sub-200 range. Which is, again, why we low-pass the melody to cut out everything below 200 so it wouldn't get in the way. Moving over to the bass line, um, again, something I was messing with earlier, we'll get into the EQ and take a look at where it is. It is likewise in this sub-200 range. So this can cause some issues with the bass drum and the two of them overlapping. So commonly, you will take a, a band EQ and make it very narrow and cut it all the way down at about 80 which you can just type in here, and another one at 120. Again, very narrow, very deep, and that will help the bass drum come through a lot more cleanly. On a standard like acoustic drum kit, 80 and, tw and 120 are about the f main frequencies of a, of a kick drum. That's about the thump at 80 and then the like click type sound of the mallet hitting the drum at 120, more or less. Um, that's made the drums a little quiet, though. We'll boost the volume on them a bit, since we did take out some of the sound. And then listen to the whole thing. Baseline is still really quiet. But um, we can apply a bit of makeup gain here in the EQ plugin, say 8, and that'll bring it up nicely. Okay. That was fun, uh, but kind of technically intense. On the plus side, you now know basically all you need to know about EQ to actually use it productively. Certainly to get started experimenting with it. By and large, um, well, Good production can make up for lackluster composition and vice versa. That's the best way to explain it. The simpler your song is compositionally, the more advanced your production needs to be. At the risk of making a few enemies, dubstep is an example of something that with incredibly advanced production and really in-depth effects and tweaking of all of those parameters, and not so complicated harmonies or structure or even rhythm really anyway that's the end of the second lesson and uh, now you know how to add a VST to Reaper how to tweak your make your layers work together production wise and hopefully you're feeling a little more comfortable there's not going to be any sort of uh, assignment after this one either, but we'll get there, maybe. We'll see. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned.